President of Engineering at Google is right here with us, Shashi Thakur from IIT Bombay, uh, more than a decade back and uh, he has been really uh, contributing in a big way into the Google search uh, with the use of artificial intelligence. Let's learn a little more from him. Uh, welcome to Sitare TV with me, Jaslin, and uh, give us some insights into the time when you passed out from IIT to your journey till date. Of course. And it's been more than uh, a decade, more than two decades at this point, uh, speaking my age out here. So uh, my journey has been, I, did, I came to the US in 1990, I did a PhD, uh, I worked uh, at a company in a different industry for a decade, I worked at a startup, been at Google for about 11 years now. Uh, at this point, I'm responsible for many different areas of product for Google search. And I was here uh, uh, representing the company as well as the industry in this panel discussion on artificial intelligence. Yeah. So coming out from the panel, what are the key uh, talking points and uh, uh, what are the basically the f uh, factors that you would like to highlight into the artificial intelligence area as of now? So, so what was very interesting to me is the amount and the extent of uh, interest as well as the depth of research that is going on uh, to push artificial intelligence forward uh, roughly on two angles. One is from the consumer side of things which is dear to my heart, uh, consumer products. How many areas uh, of the consumer experience are being impacted? Like everything from your mobile phone experience and being able to talk to it in voice and natural text, uh, ranging from that to uh, uh, self-driving cars and uh, uh, being able to recognize objects in the world and a car to drive itself. There's just a plethora of applications going on. And on the technology side, there's so much going on in terms of being able to build more complex, uh, what are called neural nets, essentially brain-like uh, computational structures to understand complex data. Uh, 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 so there's, there's so much interesting research going on to the mathematical underpinnings behind that, to computation which enables uh, a lot of the algorithms. There's just so much excitement going on right now. So you know, we all have been hearing about Google cars from a long, a long time. You know, the driverless version, of course. But uh, we've heard that um, it is not totally foolproof in the sense that uh, some of the areas where of accidents uh, are really unpredictable. The artificial intelligence level has not reached those heights that we can figure out using predictive analytics or any other algos or anything. Uh, some um, uh, you know unforeseeable circumstances under which an accident might occur. Is that one of the primary reasons the cars are not so widely seen in the market still, or there are other factors that contribute to it as well? So. Uh Firstly, just to clarify, I don't work uh, directly in that area. I'm not representing Google in what I say. is more of like my interest in reading as a consumer of technologies like that and an observer of technology. Uh, my sense is these cars have not hit uh, the consumer application space simply because uh, regulation, logistics, uh, as well as some of the technology to reach the point of safety where it, uh, like you said, use the word foolproof, to get to a point of uh, technology evolution where it's truly foolproof. Now on the flip side from everything I see and hear, uh, cars have already crossed the threshold of uh, error rates of humans. So if you say in 10,000 miles of human driving, how many accidents happen? And 10,000 miles of autonomous driving, how many accidents happen? Cars have already been competitive. Uh, autonomous cars are already competitive with humans. The bar is just a lot higher to uh, pass regulation and things of that nature. So there are a lot of other hurdles which need to be passed logistically before all of this becomes mainstream. And uh, to get to a point where it is like just extremely superior compared to human as against competitive with respect to humans. So to be competitive in the present day environment, to you know be at Google, to you know survive and thrive, what advice would you like to give out to youngsters? How do they inculcate skills in new areas, uh, relatively fresh areas like yeah. artificial intelligence and autonomous vehicles? So, so my, my advice to anybody uh, currently working in computer science is that don't lose sight of what's going on in this area. Uh, you may or may not have studied this uh, in uh, your college or even graduate school, especially if you graduated, let's say, 10 years ago. You likely have not studied this because uh, what one of the panelists called uh, 
the winter of artificial intelligence. At some point, the hype around artificial intelligence died down uh, in the 90s and stuff. You likely might not have studied it. Don't uh, think that's the case today. Don't lose sight of the fact. Go back, do your reading, take online courses. Coursera is a fantastic course in artificial intelligence and neural nets. Teach yourself the basics of this area because in five years from now, you'll regret not having learned the basics of this area. It's going to revolutionize so many different areas of technology as well as the consumer experience. So from Google perspective, what is the big next thing that consumers may expect? So, so there's a whole variety of things uh, 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 Google, of course, continues to work on. As our uh, CEO Sundar Pichai uh, has articulated even publicly, uh, we are sort of uh, crossing the, 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 the general area of mobile first, where everybody on the planet uh, could possibly access uh, the internet and mobile computing. We are reaching a point where this uh, good amount of uh, distribution and availability of mobile. We are now reaching an area of AI first. And uh, AI will make its way into so many different consumer applications. And, and Google uh, hopefully will keep pushing the boundary. We talked about autonomous cars, but even uh, in my own work in search, uh, we work on so many different areas of understanding language, understanding content, understanding images, understanding videos, understanding users, which is what interests a user. And uh, AI is enabling us to understand these uh, things just in a far better depth and improve the experience that we can give to the consumer. So uh, what you will see is that it's like not necessarily one big thing, but all of the products improving in a substantial way. Uh, well, be it photos, be it search, be it ads, every, be it YouTube, everything will improve in a substantial way uh, to give you a much better experience. I think that's that's what will happen. Last but not the least, one general question about the Google campus. You know, all the celebrities who make it to the Bay Area are at Google, yeah. right? And they're very happy, elated, excited and full of pride being there, you know. What is so special about your campus? So, so it's. Uh, I think it's partly to do with the campus that Google campus has become some sort of like a tourist hotspot, and I hear that's happening about the Facebook campus as well. People visiting the Bay Area, they'll visit uh, museums or they'll visit San Francisco and Kiradeli Square, and will want to visit Google and Facebook. There's a little bit of a tourist hotspotness to this. The other reason why I feel like, and, and uh, maybe you're referring to some of the recent Bollywood celebrities, and Bollywood celebrities have been uh, visiting Google over the last few years uh, quite a bit. What I, one thing I've seen is many of these are very, very savvy with respect to their internet presence. They are like very active on Twitter or Facebook and so on and so forth. Uh, and being savvy on the internet, uh, they feel attracted to this uh, media, new media, new internet companies uh, and want to understand what's going on in those companies and also feel like their brand uh, as a person, as a celebrity is well represented by the brand of these uh, technology companies as well. They want to be at the forefront of pushing their brand through technology. One more question, you know, having acquired YouTube, how has that helped Google uh, to you know, uh, uh, you know, meet its goals in a bigger way. So, so YouTube has been tremendously successful in essentially creating uh, an ecosystem uh, for content creators, be it professional creators or be it amateur creators. Like my daughter has a YouTube channel and she's only 11. So. Pretty much democratizing video content creation is something YouTube has allowed, which is sort of, if you go back to the mission of Google, which is to make the world's information universally accessible. Well, then the information needs to be available first, and YouTube has enabled that information to be available in the video format. And in exchange, what it has done is improved a bunch of products. Like search has improved tremendously because a lot of your needs are better served through a video. You want to ask for the presidential inauguration speech. You don't want a text a version of it. You want a video version of it. Or you want to learn how to fix something in your car or how to paint a room in your house. Video is a much better format. And the evolution of YouTube or in general of uh, video formats around the, around the web. Uh, has enabled search to become a much better product and YouTube itself has become a extremely valuable experience like if you if you look at not just the US but even in India uh, consumption of music or consumption of information through video format has become very prevalent and uh, YouTube I would say has enabled a lot of that
Wonderful. That was a great answer, and we learned a, real, a really lot from it. Thank you so much for sharing your views. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good one.